Good morning. Welcome to Stock Market Today. It's Wednesday, July 31st, 2019. I am your host, Dan Russo. Chief Market Strategist at Chaykin Analytics. Find me on Twitter at Dan Russo underscore CMT. Stock Market Today brought to you today and every day by Chaykin Analytics. Head over to ChaykinAnalytics.com forward slash today. You can sign up for a free email. Follow along with this show. Get daily stock ideas for you to consider in your inbox every trading day before the market opens. So last day of July and Fed Day, let's get going. U.S. equities finished mostly lower in Tuesday's trading, but closed off the worst levels of the day. The Russell 2000 actually added more than 1% on the day. Treasuries were mixed. The dollar was weaker versus the yen and euro. Gold finished up 70 basis points. WTI crude up over 2% and has gained in seven of the last eight session. So all eyes will be on the Fed statement today at the conclusion of their two-day meeting. Expectations widely um, in favor of a 25 basis point cut, but investors will be parsing the comments for signs of future actions by the Feds. And leading up to that, S&P futures are up 10 basis points to start the day. Asian markets were weaker overnight with China underperforming. European markets are mixed. Treasuries are slightly stronger across the curve. Dollar is stronger versus the euro, but weaker versus the yen. Gold adding on 20 basis points and WTI crude is up 60 basis points following a bigger than expected stockpile draw last night. As we dig in on the market, we can see just kind of spinning our wheels here around the 3,000 mark, waiting on the Fed. Quarter point cut, as we said, widely expected. But really, the commentary uh, is going to likely be what drives markets uh, here over the next couple of days. Near-term support still around that 3,000 mark. And then more importantly, in the 2,900 to 2,950 zone, resistance in the 3,050 to 3,100 zone, RSI is in bullish ranges where it has been for a while. So this consolidation here in the market is taking place with momentum holding within bullish ranges. That's a positive sign. Add to that the fact that shake and money flow has spiked and is now bullish after you know spending some time dancing around the zero line. Another positive sign from an indicator standpoint. Now that small divergence that we've been talking about is still in place. Obviously, we're watching it, but as we said yesterday, divergences need to be confirmed. But really, if you look across markets and across even the sector ETFs, you're seeing a lot of the same um, dynamics, near all-time highs, but a small negative divergences. Obviously, something to be aware of, want to keep an eye on it, but until price breaks key support, those divergences are unconfirmed, and we stay the course, continue to focus on bullish and very bullish stocks in the lead industry groups, and ideally try to get those stocks when they are oversold with bullish money flow. Right now, key level for the S&P 500, 2950. Diving into the note now, what are we writing about today for Cheek and Analytics clients? Investors will turn their attention to the FOMC meeting this afternoon. We've hit on that. Small cops traded higher during a generally weak day. We'll see that in just a moment. Sentiment remains mixed, not near an extreme. Kind of just keeping an eye on how the sentiment gauges uh, are moving around week to week. Not a ton to do based on those metrics. Momentum continues as an outperforming theme. It's one that we've liked. It's one we continue to like. It's a theme that we think is likely to persist. And as we said earlier, futures do point to a higher open today. Now let's look at the power bars across the major indices. The Dow has moved to an even eight bulls to eight bears. S&P 500 saw a little bit of deterioration yesterday as it dropped 23 basis points. 136 bulls, 85 bears for the power bar ratio. NASDAQ was an underperformer, 35 bulls to 16 bears. There's that small cap. Small caps outperform. Now, we've seen this from time to time where small caps have a day where they really outperform, but then fail to build on it, at least on a relative basis. We'll see if that changes. Right now, we're watching 597 bulls, 269 bears. Bonds uptick, sending yields lower. Energy had a good day with oil popping. Energy up 1.12% on the day, but look at the power bar ratio for energy. One bull for 17 bears. So according to the chicken power bar, small cap stocks and large cap stocks are bullish. Turning now to our stock of the day, and it's Goldman Sachs. Coming to us from the investment brokers and managers industry group, Goldman closed at 221.40 yesterday, up 49 basis points. Has a very bullish chicken power gauge rating due to very strong earnings performance, very positive expert activity, and strong price volume activity. 
That's the technicals. Financials are middle of the road, but when we take the 20 factors, five in each of these four categories, we come out with this very bullish rating. Very bullish stock, strong trend, strong industry group. We can see here the very bullish rating. The ribbon at the bottom of the screen tells us where that rating is and has been for the past year. So we're shifting now to a bullish rating and look at what's happening. Stock is beginning to outperform the market. Now it's a new development. So when we drop down our checklist, it's still going to be neutral because part of this metric is the persistency of our performance. So there hasn't been a lot of persistency there yet as it is a new development. However, what we do see is what we like to refer to as a personality change for the stock. So what that means is we go from kind of a mixed rating, neutral, bullish, you know, throughout the year, but underperforming to now a bullish rating and outperforming. This is known as a personality change. Add to that the fact that shake and money flow has turned bullish. Stock is above a rising long-term trend line. So I think that Goldman is compelling. I just don't think it's compelling here and now. Another One reason is overbought, oversold is closer to overbought. We can see that here when we drop down this checklist. This is a really great tool. We walk through the process every day, but now you can actually visualize it. where those metrics that Dan talks about every day. Where are they? Power gauge rating is strong. Relative strength persistency is neutral. Industry strength is obviously strong. Overbought, oversold is neutral here as we approach overbought readings, right? We are above the long-term trend line and money flow is strong. So we're starting to build that mosaic, right? This begins to look interesting when that overbought, oversold indicator rounds back down towards an oversold position, especially if it continues to outperform the market. Keep an eye on Goldman Sachs. I'm throwing it on a bullish watch list here today. Turning now to our sector tracker. We're back to the regular tracker today. Looking at the movement of the major sectors over the last five days, comms at the top of the list, as is real estate, staples, financials, and industrials. So kind of a mixed bag, right? Communications got some juice late last week from the Google earnings report, real estate eh, oscillating back and forth. We're going to take a look at that one a little bit later here. Uh, staples, we've been warming to it. We've been writing about it. Financials, we've been warming to it. We've been writing about that. Industrials, eh, middle of the road. Utilities, tech, and healthcare are in the middle of the pack. Materials, energy, and discretionary are at the bottom of the list. Remember, with discretionary, it is a broad group. We kind of advocate. We don't kind of advocate. We do advocate for taking your analysis further. Take it down to the industry level and never lose sight of the fact that on a cap-weighted basis, uh, discretionary is 25% or close to 25%. Amazon. Energy continues to be a group we want to avoid. Some near-term strength, but eh. Just can't get there yet. Fundamentals and technicals don't allow me to get there on energy just yet. Our industry in focus today, Dow Jones Reed Services. Now, over the past six months, the group has been an underperformer uh, by nearly 6%. However, the power bar ratio, which measures future potential, is strong. We can see 20 bullish stocks for 11 bearish stocks. Remember, the power bar ratio tells us how many stocks in any group are bullish, neutral, or bearish. And obviously, a positive ratio is something that we're looking for. Group is currently ranked number 12 of 21 subsectors, and it's moved up three slots over the past week. Uh, so we have a group that's kind of underperforming, but has bullish potential. So for me, what I like to do, you know, stock selection becomes really important there. You really want to focus on the leading stocks that you know, check the boxes on that checklist. Some names to consider, not just go out and buy, but consider retail value, RVI, CBL Associates, uh, CBL and Summit Hotel, I-N-N, all with very bullish Jake and Power Gauge ratings. Taking a look at the group now, here we can see kind of that mixed bag. Number one, the ETF has a neutral uh, Power Gauge ETF rating. Trend is strong as it is above a rising long-term trend line. Here's that out underperformance, oversold, bullish money flow. So it really is a mixed bag if we look at the group, right? And it's you know, ranked number 12 of 21 subsectors, so middle of the road. So you can't just blindly go out and buy real estate stocks when this is the setup. You really have to do the work, run through the stocks, look for the ones that make the most sense, and those will be your opportunities. Mixed bag for real estate right now. Trending names now, looking at what was moving. Gainers and losers in the S&P 500 yesterday. National Oil Well Varco, earnings sent that stock up 11%. Stock has been beaten down, so a bit of relief. MLM, earnings sent that stock higher by nearly 10%. WAB, same thing, 9.5% following their print. NC, INCY, 6.5% following their earnings announcement. And XEC up 
over 6% on the day. Loser side of the board, uh, Gartner down 19% as their guidance disappointed. UAA, Under Armour, miss, guide down, takes 12% plus out of the stock. HCA, their EBITDA missed. Investors didn't like what they heard. They're down 9%. Dish, earnings down. Earnings send the stock lower by 8.7%. And Perkin Elmer, uh, revenue miss sent that stock lower by 8% on the day. Now, one of the big themes around earnings season is, you know, a higher level of beats relative to average, right? Generally speaking, beats are being rewarded more than they have been on average. Misses are not being punished as much as they have been on average, but something to just kind of be aware of and keep in mind, companies are kind of talking down numbers for the second half of the year. So second half expectations have become tempered here with this uh, series of earnings so far if in the earnings season. Taking a look at our update now, let's check out who's reporting today. Willis Towers, Watson, Molson Coors, and NI are bullish stocks before the open. After the close, Cognizant, Whole Logics, MetLife, Pru, LNC, a lot of those uh, insurance stocks, right? Insurance been one of the leading industry groups for a while. We'll start to hear from some of the bullish stocks within that group. Neutral names before the open of interest, Humana, GE, uh, AMT, CME. After the close, neutral stocks that'll be on people's radar screens, obviously Qualcomm, EQIX, Western Digital uh, uh, in focus. Bearish names, SPG and Garmin before the open, APA and Oxy after the close. Chaykin suggests caution when holding bearish stocks ahead of earnings. So let's dive right in now. On Wednesdays, we take a look at how the sentiment indicators that we track uh, are, are doing, and sentiment indicators are mixed for the most part. What we're showing here is the CBOE equity put call ratio, and you can see it's kind of moved higher a little bit here in the near term, but it's middle of the road, not quite at an extreme that would warrant taking a contrary stance one way or the other, and it really kind of lines up that way across the board. Seen a little bit of a pickup in the VIX over the past week, nothing major. If we look at the CNN Fear Greed Index, moved from 50 to 53 this week. So, you know, slight move towards greed, but nothing really to get too concerned about and still remains within a neutral position. So the indicators are mixed. And as I said, not really pointing one way or the other, right? When they become extreme, like they did back in the beginning of the year when the market was cratering, it kind of makes sense to think about taking a contrary stance but uh, we're just not there yet. So we'll continue to monitor these on a weekly basis. And when the opportunities present themselves, we will point them out in our notes and on this show. One of the themes that we do like in the marketplace is momentum. We've liked it for a while. What we're taking a look at here is MTUM, the iShares MSCI Momentum Factor ETF. And we can see a nice steady uptrend above the 200-day moving average, above the support levels kind of in the 119, 120 area. Um, RSI confirming the trend. Notice that RSI has not become oversold, continues to hold within bullish ranges. A couple of times it's peaked its head above the 70 level, indicating that it's becoming overbought. To me, that's a sign of strength from a trend perspective, right? So we have a breakout holding above that breakout level, momentum confirmation for momentum. So this is a group we continue to like, we continue to look for ideas uh, on names that are holdings in this fund that meet the criteria that we look for. On a relative basis, you can see momentum kind of consolidating, but in an uptrend relative to the S&P 500. So as I drill through the fund and look for some individual names that might make sense, I come across a name like VeriSign, V-R-S-N. Bullish shake and power gauge rating, strong trend, strong industry group. Market and model are in agreement here. Bullish rating outperforming. Stock is oversold with generally bullish money flow above a rising long-term trend line and triggered one of our proprietary buy signals here today. So VeriSign is the type of name we want to consider on the long side of the portfolio. I am highlighting it in my note today. Take a look at VeriSign as a bullish idea. That's going to wrap it up for today. As I said, head over to cheekinanalytics.com forward slash today where you can sign up for that free email. A lot of the content for this show comes out of the content in that email. So you'll be able to follow along some stock ideas for you to consider in your inbox every day before the market opens. I will see you tomorrow.